Dylan Duffus, a Birmingham-born actor, director, scriptwriter, entrepreneur and father, embodies resilience and transformation. Despite facing challenges in his youth, including a rough start in school and the allure of gang membership, Dylan's journey is one of redemption and empowerment. Growing up in the rough streets of Hansworth, Dylan could have easily became another statistic. However, he turned to acting as a means of self-expression and change. Through his work, he has not only established himself as a talented actor, but also as a mentor and advocate for young people in Birmingham. By bridging the gap between rival gangs and advocating for peace, Dylan has planted seeds of hope and unity in his community. Reflecting on his journey, Dylan acknowledges the pivotal role acting played in reshaping his life. Despite not initially intending to pursue acting, Dylan's natural ability and determination propelled him to success. Dylan continues to make his mark on the entertainment industry. His latest film, Trapping, underscores his passion for social commentary. He remains dedicated to using his platform to inspire and uplift others. Dylan's story is an inspiration, a testament to the power of second chances and the unwavering spirit of community. He is not just an actor, he is a beacon of hope, paving the way for a brighter future, one project, one life at a time. You are locked in to the KMT podcast. Thank you so much for coming to see us. This is Dylan Duffus, everybody. And he is an actor and he's been acting for a very long time. I'm here to ask him how he got into acting and where it all started. So what was your childhood like? Well, I grew up, I grew up in Hansworth, Birmingham. Mom, dad, grew up in a Christian household. My dad was kind of like a, he used to do his thing, he used to like work in the community. So he's like more of a community worker and all of that there. Okay. So me and my two sisters grew up together. I went to school in Hansworth, with senior school. I didn't go there for too long. I was there for like the first year and the fourth year and that was my schooling for the senior school. Okay. And so what was what what did you find school like? Did you enjoy school? Be truthful. School was difficult like, due to dyslexia and all of that. It was kind of it was it was a hard in the way like people learn differently. So when they've only got this rigid way of teaching people, it's difficult for somebody that learns differently from how they're teaching. So mm-hmm. for me it was just a nightmare. Mm-hmm. I used to go to school and run off in the morning and have to chase me. Wow. P teacher. We have a P um, a trainers on that chase me. Okay. Enjoy school. Did it enjoy school? So how long would you say uh, you were in the education? system for? I did my, I did junior school and I did two years in senior school, two years and a couple of weeks or something like that, yeah. Okay. Also. So during school, well, during when you was meant to be in school, what, what was you doing? Where did you find yourself? For a long time I was indoors and then outside, like literally just observing what's going on outside my front door. Yeah, and like there was a hostel across the road from where my mom's house is. And then I was just watching all of the youths going in and out and mm-hmm. getting involved, but I could cut hair. So my thing was, oh, go on, my man, turn, come and give me a shape up and a trim and that. So, <laughs> so you find yourself cutting yeah, hair? I'm in the middle of the, I'm in the midst now. <laughs> I'm involved in the, but yeah, I mean, yeah, so I'm seeing what's going on. Was that your first hustle then, the first uh, yeah, money first, that you earned? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so, so your eye opener. Yeah. Like, I like to be flying this. So I like to have my own, get yeah, me cut my own hair. My mum couldn't even pay for it every weekend. So I thought, you know, so I'm going to to cut hair. So that was how I did it. Now I'm on myself. And then, yeah, started cutting hair. And then obviously been outside. The man didn't want to shape up. Yo, go on, my man. And then I'm in that house. Um, seeing all the hustling and bustling and whatever mm-hmm. else was going on. Okay. Yeah, that was my introduction to the streets. So would you say you kind of like met a lot of people during that time? Yeah. When I was outside, it was a whole different environment. My peer group was at school, so older people, older people that are around, yeah. So they, they, yeah. So they're teaching, and I'm learning things that I didn't have no idea about. I grew up in a Christian household, so my mom was taking me to church every Sunday and all that there. Mm-hmm. So, and my friends, like again, they was in school, like junior school, and their household was kind of similar to mine. So mm-hmm. that was my first experience. Like I don't have no. no older cousins, no male cousins, or nothing. So that was my first experience of outside. So. Where did you find yourself getting introduced to the film industry? Film industry. So during all of that time when I was, I've always, I've always told people to be truthful and this is the truth. So this is like law of attraction, all that kind of stuff. I've always said, I'm young. I feel like I'm a star. I've always said, tell my friends that you're a star, you know, gee, I'm going to do this. Just shut up, you boy, man. Let's get back to what we do. I'm saying, nah, but bro, I feel like this is where it's going to be. I get myself. But I feel everybody should feel like, you know, a star yeah. in their own way. 
But yeah, I was really feeling myself. <laughs> so I said, I'm going to make movies or something, bro. And then that's what I've been saying. I said, as a child, and then the opportunity arise. Somebody introduced me to Penny Walker, the director of One Day. And we sat down and had a conversation. And from that conversation, we built a script. I was a script consultant. Then after that, I was... Like, so was Penny Walker someone who was working within your community? No, nah, she's from London. She's London. She's like the white lady from London, well, not even Argentina. So, yeah. So, how did you get to meet her? Um, it was through a friend of the family. Um, no family, no my mum's people. It was so my mum's or my mum's cousin's family. Uh, so, he introduced me. So, he's a photographer. So, he says that because I told everybody I'm trying to make some movies and that. I was trying to find a way out of the lifestyle I was living and to change my ways and do something different. So yeah, he introduced me to the book. Everybody asked, cause she was, in, she was doing her research for a long time in Brom, but everybody asked what she the police. But because I got- When you say research, what was she doing? Just trying to build a story, get to know the characters and build, develop a story. She's what, like the black right. community? Well, it wasn't, I don't, it was about the streets. Okay, yeah, which is streets. dominated by the right. black community. In that, in, in that area, yeah. So you linked up with Penny, and how did that go? What did Penny what 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 did Penny find in you that could bring the spark to the industry? Um, like I said, a lot of people thought she was the police, and nobody was not open with her. I sat down and had an open conversation with her because I knew where she was coming from, which she, she was exactly. So she said she just the authenticity, and, mm. and that's where one day was developed from from the stories that we was given on that day. So one day is a film mm-hmm. about your a story in your life it's um it's a day in allegedly life. yeah no nah, allegedly it was just a story yeah obviously i've got well, i got baby i got children with them because i don't like to what baby mothers the mothers of my children yeah um, I, have, I have all of that and i grew up out i grew up in the streets and so um, penny sat down and you wrote the film with her no not directly i gave her just bits and bobs and she made it into a script i had no i don't i know nothing about filmmaking or film writing or scripts or nothing like that okay. so it was just an idea Ideas that I gave to her and she made it into whatever it is like stories and she I love that film literally that was yeah. like the beginning yeah. of the industry yeah. like for seeing people like me mm-hmm. us on the TV yeah. that was like and it was so exciting to see mm-hmm. so uh, yeah that was really great yeah. and I feel like even the work that you've done it still beams back to one day so what was it like filming because obviously you were casted into the film as well one day it was so we was doing we was doing rehearsals in like the top of like a taxi a taxi rank. We were sitting there doing our rehearsals and it was crazy. So we had hundreds of people outside and queuing and, and I was walking around giving out flyers and that's a piece of paper. But I was talking shit. I was gonna pop up in the hood with like a camcorder or something and start like recording shit. But yeah, then the trailers pulled up the trucks, all of the trucks and the lorries and the catering and this, the makeup and the trailers wow. and all of that. You get me bam in the hood. It was wild. Like, it was it's been dumb. really exciting for everyone. Yeah. So, was you able to bring like your friends in? Like, yeah, it was open auditions for it was, it was street casted. So everybody from like everybody who had a talent or didn't mind like. But back then, to be truthful, I didn't want to be on the camera. So I understood that like people from or living that certain life. So I was like, nah, bro, that's wild. That is you. Yeah. So that must have been like a big step for you to be coming away from everything that you kind of knew into this new industry. It was. It was. Well, like I said, I always wanted to be a star, so I had the opportunity to do it. Like, thoughts become things. Like I said, the power of the tongue, or retraction, call it prayer, whatever you want to call it, call it, you understand it, it works. And do you feel that had a major impact into how you got into that position? And there's no other way. It wasn't, it didn't, there's no, have you heard the story I just told you? It's random. It's so random, but it's something that I knew was always going to happen. Basically, like, I'm going to do some movie shit. And I used to tell them off, like, people around close to me, and like, they'll vouch me to this day. Like, mm. yo, I remember you used to say that shit. So if you're filming, you've got the cast there, you've got the cameras there, everything's going. How was the premiere? Premiere was Leicester Square. Leicester Square. The premiere at Leicester Square. So record, how was man. that? Wild, like, it was mad to see ourselves on the big screen and that. Like, yeah, and pictures, pow, 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 they did bright flashing lights and all that, wow. Man, that must was, have been like your first taste of the lifestyle. Yeah, different, like I said, I ended up doing from that, like, we did Rihanna's theater, work on music videos. So France with Rihanna doing the, what's it called, Tia Tamara or something. Then we did Naomi Campbell's 40th birthday party, South Francis. I did, we do, and work to um, Wiley and get me my brother, man, Bill Wiley, and buy Onyx and them, man. But um, yeah, yeah, it was mad. And it was on Jay-Z's Forever Young was meant to be in the video, but fell asleep. Fell asleep? <laughs> fell asleep. 
Oh my gosh. No, because I come from Brom from early. I was like Ali Pali from Cracker Dawn. It's ready. You get me? They didn't start filming till like one o'clock the next morning. You get me? I was fucked. So I sat down in the car, directed the yeah, go on the yeah, just chill out for a bit. Yeah. But anyway, that's a whole other story. But yeah. It happens. So, and like I said, 40, like a 63 million pound year with um, Naomi Campbell's billionaire boyfriend, <laughs> middle of the south of France. Wow. Speedball coming to pick me up in that video. <laughs> oh it was wild. Big old Rachel and. um. I don't know what the company's called again, but it will come, sorry. <laughs> it will come. Rebel State, sorry, Rebel State, yeah. Mm. Rebel State, yes. Yeah, so. so do you feel like that was literally where you knew you wanted to do acting yeah. and you was going to do that for the rest of your life? I want to make films. I like acting and I enjoy it, I like it, but it's the storytelling, it's to create something like this in your mind from the get you can put it out there. Mm. So it's more the storytelling that I want to do. I do enjoy the acting. And, uh, and you've done many, many movies. The intent, your acting's excellent. I mean, okay. literally, I commend you. Thank you've you. done excellent. And to me, you brought each and every role I've seen you in, you bring that story to life because you've got that element of that real, raw, urban, ghetto vibe about you. Mm-hmm. And I feel like, you know, you're definitely casted in to bring that element of realness. Mm-hmm. And every time I've seen you on screen, you definitely bring that, mm-hmm. you know. And in your last movie that, you, that you're that you acting in and that you wrote, to me, phenomenal, like Trapping, All Juice. Yes. I loved the movie, Thank literally. You. I loved it. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I. how would you feel if that movie kind of was really put out there in its element? Because to me, it's still. underrated. Yeah. You know, it is, it's hard to access because you have to pay for it. And people, the way people consume stuff, they just go on Netflix or wherever they want to go. So fingers crossed, I was willing. We can get it on there one day or it's on this platform where they can just stream it. But I'd love for the people to see because I think it's something that these kids need to see. You they want, need to see you want, it. You want to be, you want to be dope boys, do you? you want to be a trapper? Traps start watch this, bro, because this is what's going to happen. This is how it starts, bro. Life. You're going to go to the band, though. Yeah? You're going to sit in there all day, mate. You understand? It's worse than for kids. And that's what I feel like. The, the storyline is real and the mm-hmm. acting really portrays the storyline. Mm-hmm. So you're able to watch that film and get a full understanding of the trap mm-hmm. and literally the trap. That was what it was more about. Like I was watching all these films and all that. I'm seeing all these kids making these films and that. I'm thinking, whoa, this is kind of getting to a point where people trying to make it look cool. Mm. And this shit's cool. The role ain't cool. How some... was it working with some of the actors? The in actors, the movie? it was amazing. It was the thing about it, we shot it in the COVID, so. We had besides 17 days. 17 days? Yeah. Wow. And a couple of years, 17 days, I think, all in all. But yeah, we shot it 17 days. And the actors was amazing. The kids was amazing. But a lot of them was their first time on camera, even the lead. So yeah, the abracadabra is amazing. It was all chilling. Like we had like, we just had some house. We had like a little, um, some, like some, some big houses in there that we was all staying in. So everybody got kind of close. It was intense mm-hmm. for that 17 days. So, yeah. And how did you come be, around writing it? I was sitting there, it was just, like I said, the idea was, I was sitting there watching, feeling, watching all this stuff, and thinking everybody's glamorizing this thing, and it's not trapping, trap, 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 things about, because, and all these kids are aspiring to it, like, went to a school, because we used to do the mentoring and that in the school, and asked how many kids, um, how many have been approached to go on the county lines, or on the band or whatever, you know, there was 30, I mean, 31, and there was 31 kids in the class, 30 in the class, but they hand up, so I thought, whoa. That's the times we're living in now. Yeah, it's an occupation, eh? Like, you get me saying? Yeah, the trap. When we was young, the select few used to do their thing here, yeah, and that was what they was doing. Mm, it now, seems like for, for a lot of, you know, inner city kids, it's, it's the their only first, way. Well, it's their first thing that they, they probably will break out of it. It doesn't work for everybody, but for most of them, some of them, most of them are going to try it. They're going to try it. If you live in a certain environment, you were going to try and mm. get involved in this. Well, the majority of mm. it. There's a few interventions now, you know, that are literally working hard to prevent. Getting the kids, the way that society is right now and the way like through the music, like I said, through the media, through whatever they're, mm. cons- they're consuming, it's the kids, the cool thing to do. And do you I'm feel not, like the movie is a good... Deterrent? Yeah. I would say, yeah, that's why I, I wanted to watch it. Before, like I said, it's a choice is yours, do what you want to do, it's your life, live it, do what you get, you want to start your own movie. How much did the movie cost? It cost, it was all independent. Okay. So we all had to find money from left, right, and centre, and chip in, and everybody put together. But I think we disclose on it here, but it's costed okay. yeah, a few hundred, a few hundred thousand. 
I'm not sure how the industry works, but it's not usually you get usually get granting, it. usually you get grants and that and that's why it is you'd get like a big distributor or somebody behind it. All of this was independent, so we got Slim and Femi and that you get because they did push it to the best they could with what they had. You understand? And it, like I said, even to believe in man in the first place, because it was Femi that pushed the button, me and Penny were trying to get funding for it for ages. You understand? And then Femi said, you know something, let's do it. And then we made it happen. When did you write the movie? I wrote the movie from, I think it was beginning like 2018, 19, I started writing that. Wow. So it showed you really how significant Persistence the Persistence and believing in yourself, yeah. Yeah. And the message, how yeah. significant that message was in 2023. Man, it's mad. It's crazy and it becomes more and more relevant. Like, the more what's going on out here, I'm just watching Beauty the Kids and that is all. Mm. It's crazy. And, it's, and the music. And that so is. would you say your talent, as much as I know you have a, you are an excellent actor, would you say your you prefer to write over act? If I've got somebody, because I'm not actually the person typing, I need somebody around me that can you get me to, turn the thoughts into what it needs to be. You understand it? But I enjoy that process. I'm going back and forth, Penny with, like, with Penny and that, because Penny was me and Penny that wrote the track. And yes. So going back and forth with her and making it all make sense and tying it up, and I enjoy that. And it, like I said, I was new. Excellent. Yeah, you know, like escaping reality, like it's just, I'm in my zone, like mm. my thoughts and yeah, mm. just, and then to see that happen and then to be somewhere and it's action. I think, yo, this came out of my brain because I remember the first day sitting on the bed and getting me my boxes in the morning thinking, yo, I'm like, yeah, let me do this. I can remember the day and I got film on Amazon and everything. Yeah. So, yeah. Done really, really well. So, would you say it's about the connections? Because obviously, you're, I'm, I'm talking to someone right now who hasn't got an education in this industry. And have you had training in acting? Any type of training? You have no training. Yeah, Penny popped up in the hood and said, action. And we started filming. So... Oh, I could, yeah, I could, like I said, I'd love to be able to, I should, I want to, I should invest myself and do it, but it's just a thing of just But do life you, life. I feel you've suppressed that. I have, I haven't pushed it to, I haven't pushed, you see the acting thing, I haven't pushed it nowhere near to the limit I could, but at the same time, if you watch UK television, you know, about four or five, there's about, you, what you can show in your hand how many black people that are dominating the cast. And that, so. so would you say that it's a culture, it's a, it's a racism, would you say it's discrimination? It's not discrimination, because we have to understand as well, black people are 4% of the UK. It's so another night, you understand it. So when you must, it must be a bit more than four percent. Uh, that was the stats. I think that was last year or the year when I last checked. But mm. it's black. We live in multicultural services. When you go everywhere else in the UK, there's not that much. You'll feel mm-hmm. the difference. You'll feel like yeah, oh, the minority. Yeah. You understand it. Mm-hmm. So but yeah. So I understand it's business at the end it's of the cultural day. Cultural bias. Really. Yeah, but at the same time, it's business because I'm trying to. I have, I'm trying to sell this product, mm-hmm. and the majority of the people at this, so I have to cater to them people to get to sell my product. Mm-hmm. So if I'm making television, or people. I want you get my investing my money and I'm gonna you get me I just I don't want just a certain demographic to come watch I need the majority yeah so I get it it's not so I wouldn't say it's racist it's just the game and it's just how the game goes but I suppose mm. that's everywhere if you want to make yeah because definitely in London like as much as there definitely is like institutional racism and mm. um, deep racism I feel like when it comes to the youths them like that the teenagers growing up 20 years but they're all in the same bracket regardless of the color like this is just the poor people and how they get treated mm-hmm. do you understand well that's mm-hmm. how i see it so you know but i feel in relation to like trapping for instance your race isn't taken into consideration mm-hmm. in the trap it yeah, doesn't man. it doesn't matter so that's it's what i feel like that there's a big misunderstanding yeah, about it's just these people now when drugs is um, it's a billion dollar business probably a trillion dollar business how about that it's everybody's involved whether it's people are taking the drugs selling it supplying it whatever this has no race I mean, addiction is addiction escapism is escapism and everybody's living this life so everybody's trying to escape so mm. a lot of people are anyway yeah there's no race when it comes to none of that stuff it's just mm. money and like that you know like that yeah, yeah. so your so your uh, other movies that you've done for instance Intent mm. did you have any impact in the writing of those movies no I never had no impact in it but we had the freedom to improvise on the day so on the day you could add your two pence and make it more and however you felt it was and as long as it was agreed to, to let you run with it. So yeah. 
I feel and like Calvador, Calvador, yeah. when he was directing and that, he gave us, yeah, he gave me that. Was he the director of Intent One? Yeah, he was the uh, director of Intent One. He gave me that freedom to do my thing. He gave all of us, even Scorch, he gave us, that's why he felt like he prompted us and poked us in, but he gave us this and we got Calvador as well. Yeah. And yeah. that's good. I feel like then you're really able to bring your character into mm-hmm. action. Yeah. Yeah. It was enjoyable. It's like he was child's play, though. That's all it is, isn't it? To be truthful, you don't know, used to pretend when he was a kid, and that. that's the beautiful thing about it. It's like, it's, it, they paying us to do this. This is going to potentially make some dough. And we just, and it was that experience. Was, and the thing about being on set, everybody bonds. Mm-hmm. It's so intense. So you yeah. become kind of family here. Yeah. <laughs> so you might not even like each other. You might piss each other off. What? We found now if we get reluctant for life. Oh, it's so <laughs> yeah, good. Yeah, so that's what it is. It's, yeah, it's beautiful. I like, yeah. I, like, like, and the thing about it was, it's people like minded people. It's all coming from kind of the same kind of environment. So, just mm. to have the opportunity, and everybody could feel the magic of it when we was making the tent one more. Mm. It felt it was magical. You feel like it was going to do whatever it's supposed to be. How difficult was it juggling your family around your acting career? Acting career, that's what it is. You get a month of acting, you get me here and there sporadically, so it gives you a lot of freedom and time to do from what you got to do. Mm-hmm. And at the same time, you can get yourself in a lot of trouble or you be, can be constructive. But it's difficult as an actor because, like I said, in the UK, because there's not much. So you have to fill in all of that time. Mm-hmm. So if you get a job this year, a job next year, a job at the end of the year. So I do documentaries as well. Yeah. So I've done a few documentaries. I do fixer work. I do lots of different things behind the scenes in the industry as well. So. So you're a father? Yeah. How many interest. children? Ten of them. Ten children? Ten children. Well, any grandchildren? Yeah. Not yet? Not yet. Okay. Yeah. How old is your oldest child? He's 26 and 27. 26. Okay. So how, so juggling your family with your acting career, do you feel like you've been able to <coughs> push a lot into your family due to Most that? Most of my kids, this have been around me. They grew with me. I've been, my mom's going away and I've been home the baby not the baby what you know in that mm-hmm. just before nursery kind of so, yeah you've done all of that bit yeah I agree with them my oldest ones and that it was a bit crazy because I had them when I was a child child so mm-hmm. that's all I was all political I was all crazy you get me there it, what age did you have 6, 15, 16 yeah, 10, 16 yeah, 15, 16, 16 yeah. okay yeah so yeah crazy but at the same time yeah, it's a whole another story for a whole another day so then my first two it was a bit it was a bit crazy so they grew up with me but as well they, to be truthful I don't think I'm mature enough right now to have children so do you still feel young at heart yeah I feel uh, yeah do you have to remind yourself of your age? Definitely. I have to say, okay, this is what's going on. This is this, but then I feel to my, I, I don't conform. So what is it? As long as I'm okay, I can live in, I'm doing what I need to be doing. I'm mm-hmm. happy. They want more. But everybody, if everybody wants this, I'm trying to be happy. I think that's what keeps you young, like yourself. I'm not trying. Stuff, stuff, and like, we all need stuff in that, but stuff doesn't, after a bit, you can get a whole lot of stuff, and then you think stuff is just stuff. So what makes, what makes you happy? Yeah. Everything. What makes me happy? My children make me happy. And when, when they're not pissing me off, but yeah, my babies make me happy. Yeah. Just being able to spend time with people around me that I care about, that's mm-hmm. so cool. Yeah, and be able to look after people, put people up. You know what I mean? That makes me happy. Are you close, do you, are you close with your friends? Do you have, like, close friends? I have, I have one, one person or close like I have a few people I'm like I have a few people my friends and that but like check for on a day to day basis and what I'm going or even once a month for I have like one person that I'll probably like that but I have I speak to loads of people if I see them and be cool mm-hmm. and it's it's always love and that but I And do you find people. it safer that way? Or it's just the way the cookies crumbled when I was young. I used to have loads of people around me, but then, and I don't know if it's to do with television and the film stuff as well, because obviously there's always, and if there's an argument or debate, when they're filming, they said you're always in Asia, we did London Regions, and yeah, so it could be. So do you feel like it's negatively impacted, like your kind of status in your community? Like, no, to be truthful, after the documentary, I feel like when, when I first made the film, everybody saying it's dry snitching, bro, how could you be making a film about this, that, and the third? And this is, this is, this is, it's a, it's a fiction story, like, you said it's real, just, just <laughs> your friend's just, like, you know, no, but hold on, you said, <laughs> you don't remember this happening, I never said that was to do with that, bro, this happens everywhere, my friend, you understand it, this is just a story, bro, it's a fictional <laughs> story, you know I mean, what, then that was all no, of that, so, always it's one. political, when I first made the film, it was political, yeah. and then I made a documentary, trying to get me to have my, put my two 
two pence into the gang ticking that and the man was like what the fuck are you what are you talking about what are you talking about D-boy that's not your thing that's just, the fuck I don't know it's, it's a you. fictional story come on man yeah, but we did the documentary that was real life so that was trying to bring the gangs together the man would say why are you that was actually out? a great concept like tell me some more about that because I know that you was able to bring two enemies together how did it no. work fully everybody together just certain people and whatnot but he just planted a seed and hopefully the seed's grown and it's done like done but the seed was good what, what was it well basically we just i just pen like somebody got passed from to johnson side so i come from hands office or like, whatever not just like screw out the gang but there's two different gangs in birmingham i come from one side and a youth from the other side got a pass and then when he got his pass um he's, he phoned up penny because penny when she was doing her research she started on that side of town first the, um, the, Holes inside the town. So, yeah, he, said, he called up and he said, You speak to them guys over there. Ain't no way that we can treat something like some peace or something happen over there. But this is how it should be. Me. Penny hit me up and I've got kids, I've got boys and wickedest fingers. This thing is generational, obviously. You get me, third generation, second generation, third generation, these kids now claiming gang, but you get me, these, it's, not good. it's not good. You understand it, claiming some shit that man them out in their 50s started. Kids that are leaving school representing this shit. <laughs> so you yeah. understand of one and two, the infrastructure is not there for them to do how it would, you get me, how it would be if it mm-hmm. was for certain things, but they're still ripping. Mm-hmm. It's even madder, like you were saying earlier, like everybody on the same block, like that man from that road is beefing with that man from there, so it's mm-hmm. different, but everybody wants to rip Yeah, like, time. is it like that in, is it like that in Birmingham? Yeah, in a, in a way, yeah. Cause there's no infrastructure before there used to be a hierarchy and there'd be that person, you get me this man, that man, and there'd mm-hmm. be people and that there'd be, there's none of that. Normal. So you say like, cause what I find is that it's close in it now. It's not about say two different areas. It's about two different blocks, two different postcodes. It's, two it's different the people. same area, though. It's people as beefing with insulting house. You could be, you get me, it's, it's crazy. It's all, it's, it's, there's it's no, ridiculous. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It's nonsense, isn't it? That's the wickedest thing. Right? So what was, what was your concept that you brought, that you and Penny brought? It was, it was a guy named Shaba. Shaba was the, he's from the other side. He came and hit Penny up. Penny didn't, she had no concept. She wasn't even thinking. She was like, she just in the middle, like, I can connect, it to, I can speak to them guys. And I threw it out there and the man wanted to fuck me up. He was the fuck you talking about? He was wild. Yeah, your mum was with no, that leaked out. It was crazy. No. But it was it called? The, um, yeah, it was mad. It was mad. Well, obviously, I've got boys and I didn't want them. I was thinking to myself, imagine when my kids get caught up in this fuckery. I better say something constructive. And now I've got these boys. So what was Penny able to do? Penny just because like, she was connected to me, so I was a good passing on the message that my man said this and then we said fuck it let's just film this and it was a nightmare but at the same time when the documentary came out we didn't have a violent crime dropped in one area by 50 percent and 30 percent in the other area like these are police stats and, wow. and then we didn't have a, we didn't have a firearms incident for 18 months and it was unprecedented um gunshots going off every day up until that and you didn't have one for 18 months no. due to this intervention yeah, they, so they, they, so BBC, why the, um, the chief commission was um in preparing and well, the police um just saying so he spent 360 million pounds to have zero effect and these guys didn't have no dough and they had such an effect why don't you so he get me so why weren't they able to adapt what you guys done and bring it to the system because when we made the documentary the police said if there's no if there's no crime then we ain't got a job have we cold like that cold so all the man are playing up and gang banging and doing what you keeping these motherfuckers in business bruh Trust you understand me. it you're the one keeping them they're not like i says you're getting money doing what you're doing you're staying off the radar it's the violence obviously they're gonna come for you regardless don't listen like you get me but it's the violence what brings that you get me they get paid for that mm-hmm. big cash they can sell gang unit this unit that unit get offended for this all we need like i said they spent 360 million pounds in bro before that on gang shit 360 million pounds. So just going to random people, money this from that, money this there. It's a business. So when you brought, when you guys came together, what was you doing? We had a ment, we had a mentoring. So we was doing mentoring, working in schools, working with the youth, just, just everything to do with youth. And it had youth that break. much of an effect. 18 months, no gun crime at all. Yeah, 18 gun months. That was more to ju- Like I said, I can't, I don't know why it was, but that was the stat. These are, well, these are the stats that you can Google in it. Yeah, so yeah, this is, so it's crazy. And like I said, the riots had just happened and all that as well. Mm. So it was a different time. Yeah. yeah, so we got to film all the riots because that happened while that was happening. So it just made sense. And then for the riots, everybody was out because I had doing crime together with the battle clavers on, not knowing who's who, but we're outside. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I can't really live like that. If we see that divide and conquer and divide and get me once we're divided, get me unity. If we stay united, we can't fail. We're divided, we stick in the bundle. And don't fall 
don't fall victim to the system. And when I say that, I mean like the whole trap, for instance, mm -hmm. and just just petty crime that can just have you in a desperate situation over nothing. And you see what it is, what these kids don't understand. Like, it's, you feel like you're in a fucked up situation. Go and, go and, go and, go and sit in the toilet for 24 hours in that, yeah, and that's jail. So if you can handle that, if you think your situation is fucked up and you can walk to the shop, you can do what you like and you can get some fresh air and you can, you've got tomorrow to try and do something better. The situation can For be some reason, I worse. feel like jail is so behind closed doors. You know, you, this is where you end up. You see what it is. Every, but it's like, it's not shown what, enough. It's see. not the people that have come out reformed. It, I feel like they're so reformed that they don't even step on a platform to ensure that the younger generation don't can't go where they've just came from. I, I hear people say it's fuck, jail's fucked up in that, but man don't talk about how, because jail, to be truthful, it's, it's like you're in the buildings, but you see the fuck, it's the psychological fuck that you get. You're locked in the room, you got a man telling you, closing the door on you, get in there, there's some kid probably younger than you, like get in this house. Obviously you get to socialise in that, but every evening, boom, bam, ch -ch -ch. Three keys to locked in, to lock off his fuck. You get me it's mindful. It's not. It's not nowhere a human should be. You know, like that. It's not different. Yeah, you missed out on life. It's some edgy, people, right? yeah, some edgy. Obviously, you've got that. You've been, you've been trauma. It's a severe trauma. Lock somebody in a room. It's trauma. That go kidnap. A long sentence for that. Yeah, I feel like there needs to be more, more to show the younger generation that this is where you go and this is what happens, mm -hmm. and this is the reality. That's why when I'm trying to make these films from the, well, that's what I've been trying to do, give them a harsh reality. No glamorization is no, you get me, majority, like I said, majority of the road life is just horrible. What have you got, what have you got in um, in your plans for the future? A couple of movies written, ready to go, like a TV yeah. crime series and that. Just, it's just about getting the funding, believe in me, man, I can, I can do this. Yeah. It's all about getting the funding and that. Like I said, it's hard. The last film that we're still trying to recoup, so. Any filming? In relation to women? Yeah. Because, you know, something. we're underrepresented. Yeah, that's something we did starring women. So, yeah. yeah I what's, what's that about? It's, I don't want to give away too much, but okay. it's a crime thriller. And there's more about three ladies that was. Okay. So I need to tell us some stories. Because I still feel like the the film industry is underrepresented film. with women. Do you know where we are right now? We're like, do you remember in the 90s when you had like Minister Society Boys in the hood, all of them films, yeah. and that, that's like where the UK is, and then we're yeah, going through that's that what motion, I feel. And then we're Because they love our to, culture now. Yeah, that's what it like, is. Like, you know, where before, like, we didn't kind of like, we, did, we, we was kind of shy to talk in public because, like, our lingo kind of was seen as a bit threatening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like now we can talk, we can talk. Mm -hmm. And we, we, we're not influence shut the, down as much as we were the back influence then. Influence the culture. You listen to BBC Radio or One Extra. It's <laughs> yes, like, it's, you get me somebody, you can relate to it, you understand it. Capital. And when you put on like the TV, mm -hmm. I see the gun mm -hmm. finger out. I yeah. say, okay, because yeah. this weren't happening before. You influence the whole culture. That's what yeah. happened. And it comes from the Caribbean side of things as well. Oh, well, this is it. Yeah. yeah. Well, so do you feel that's, that's had a positive impact? On the industry. On society, no. Yeah. Yeah. This is all this drilling, all these kids are walking around paranoid, scared about lives and this and that. So they can all carry a knife because they're scared that they're going to get stabbed. Mm. And it's all through the music that they're listening to that's creating the paranoia. Because, like I said, you can check the stats on that. This wasn't more, when we was growing up, stabbing, it just happened and that, but mm. not like what's going on right now. The, you music, the, the music, the music is. Yes, the music, the drill music, wet, 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 this, that, and it's, it's yeah. getting out of hand. So, yeah. I don't want to talk too much on it because it's getting to that point now where it's so controversial. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's I a think lot. it's, we have to, we have to, I read something like that, I don't know if it's fake news, but it says, Ice T says, no, Ice Cube said um, the NWA is a PSYOPs operation. So, mm. PSYOPs operation is something from the government put into your community community to fuck your community up mm. basically so you're saying like it was we was giving gangs to rap and to fill up the prisons because prison is a business and it costs me what's if maybe i think it's about 50 bags to keep a person in there right now if you understand it so imagine i've got this whole time that needs filling up mm. and I can here's get something online as well in relation to like the jobs that the prisoners the uk prisoners have to do mm -hmm. like to earn their little money or whatever and it literally is another form of slavery because they've got them building 
I used to do, I've done some phone call, you know, like telecommunications and that's so on the phone doing that, I got right to the group. That's a probably paid job in jail. So, so they got you talking to them? People, yeah, calling people and doing, going for the thing. And what's it called, cold calls, what do they call it? But yeah, yeah, that, yeah. You get, you get to keep them on the line as long as possible. And you tell them about this, trying to sell them something. And then, then you have a board, like they've got a board. Is that what you've done in jail? Yeah, yeah, so, and then, oh. and then they had so a board and kind of like, well, yo, get who's doing the most? And that was kind of trying to motivate you to. Oh, okay. So you're kind of like, yeah. it's like a sales team. Yeah, sales team, basically. Yeah. So. Wow, with the prisoners. Yeah, that was a good job in there. That was a good job. Because you're on the phone all the day. Was it for people. like a, diff- a particular company? I can't remember what the company was. They promised you a job and you came out with that, you know. And obviously you want that money. Think, yeah, you think it's awesome. At least I got a little something to go to. We get my can get a job. Yeah, so. so overall, would you say your lifestyle has impacted your career? Definitely. I wouldn't be wouldn't have a career without well probably like, well, based on what my film career's been about so far, I probably wouldn't have a career without it, but at the same time, as it hindered it, it yeah. It's because of my actions and some of my ways I need to unlearn. So would you say, like, you got, you got, mm, there's way more for us to see from you? Definitely. I mean, I've got a whole lot. This is just the beginning, man. This is the warm. They say it Come takes on. about when you start, when you get in the game, and tell you about take 10 years to get in there. That's what Penny told me. It's going to take you about 10 years. Come I've been on. there for a minute now, so I'm warming up. And I understand it. Remember when I first started, I knew nothing about filmmaking. I could make a movie now. I know kind of how things are meant to be. Who needs to be in what position to do what and make things happen. So. I take my hats off to you because coming from someone without an acting education, what you see, you it, what? you've come a long way. Yeah. And I feel like it's not not that I would encourage anybody to get into acting and not go and study it, mm-hmm. but I feel like with You've pushed every boundary. Mm -hmm. Like, you didn't have a secondary education. Mm -hmm. So you weren't able to Mm -hmm. go and do this initially Mm -hmm. without going round. Yeah, even reading scripts, I had to learn ways to, like, do read the script and then, like, play it on the tape and then learn it through that instead of just... So there's been loads of hurdles. I'm not going to lie, it's been difficult. And at the same time, I don't think... I haven't peaked in my acting. I could take... I know I could... You ain't... If I ain't done nothing yet, put it like that, if I really pushed it. But at the same time... Growing up in certain environments, you have to be able to switch. You know, if I don't want to do, I am have to, don't want to go outside today, but well, I got to go outside today and I deal with this person, that person, so I better turn it on. Yo, but in my head, I've got other stuff going on, so mm-hmm. it's a thing that was learned. So that's why a lot of the roles that I've done, it's been easy because it's something mm-hmm. I want to be pushed and stretched. Mm-hmm. It's something that's completely out of my norm, mm-hmm. just to show up my skills. Yeah. yeah. Fingers crossed that happens. It will. I'm going to get Yeah. I feel like we've only just seen a piece of you. And so would you say, like, in relation to your future, would you want to star in the movies that you're writing? Would you still want to have a role in your movies to give that element of you? I wouldn't mind. I don't, I'd enjoy it. So, yeah, I wouldn't mind being in the films. It's like Quentin Tarantino and all them kind of guys, they do that kind of stuff. But, yeah, to be truthful, what the thing about it is, if I can make it, because the thing, this, like, don't get it twisted. Everybody sees it on the TV, that like, it's hard. I said you get work every now and again here and there and that sometimes it might be a good check or it might you get me you be a bit to boogie for a bit and maintain but mm. it's hard it's not for the faint hearted mm-hmm. you get me imagine me famous and broke or struggling or having a rainy you know like that and you still so like about do you feel too. like in, no. in those times where yeah. say you ain't got work yeah. would you do you work in do you I've had to create other businesses with so I'm not falling into old ways. So we've created other streams of income to be able to maintain during the times. But these things like I, I like to hustle anyway, like so business like yeah, me, I like to have something mm-hmm. to do. Because so. you've got your camel vodka. Yeah, I got camel vodka. And that's 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 a joint enterprise, I believe. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a yeah, I'm a co owner so, have. Tell us about vodka. that. Come on. So camel vodka that came about. I was um, at my mate Zimbo, so this is somebody that I met during he's from the other side, so I met him, he was became my business partner, but I met him through the documentary. So he was happy because he's a he was one of the original rappers from Birmingham slash I don't know if you like, heard of that. I think slash. I have, you know. Yeah, so yeah, so he yeah. was the original slash rapper Zimbo, so he was um, doing his thing. So he was having an album launch party kind of thing. I've gone down there and the owner of Camel sent some samples for him because he knew them from back in the day. Okay. So we sent some samples, but everybody else is partying and doing the music and that. I said, I ain't seen this brand before and I taste him. I said, does it belong to you? Mm-hmm. But me being me, that's always been a dream to have a legal dope. And alcohol is legal drugs, you understand it? So mm-hmm. I said, yo, bro, 
Then I hit my, the guy who made it happen. We've been rocking ever since, we became business partners and we've been doing our thing, so. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So oh would, would you say that's another stream of your income? Yeah, it's something over here. It's building. It's, um, it takes a lot of money to, a lot of these businesses take a lot of mm-hmm. money. At the same time, it's about, and to think, you have to understand with business, you might not see no money for the first five years, 10 years. It's all about the system. Mm-hmm. Because when it goes, it goes. So you just have to be able to hang in. That's with the hustler mentality, some way by hook or by crook we're going to get for this week. Mm-hmm. So that's what it is. Mm-hmm. So you didn't bar. bring any of us. I'm gonna bring. I'm gonna send it down. I did bring some. I had a nail in the tire, and I just had to jump to the double car. <laughs> I didn't so. think it was gonna be. I'm gonna like, 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 keep you 100. You understand it? So yeah. So. So yeah. Um, okay. Cool. So send me over some pictures anyway. We're yeah, gonna I'm put gonna it up. It, yeah. 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 And, um, so Camel Park and then we got a bar we got a bar in Costa Factory in Birmingham as well so and what's that like? it's like um, we hold events there from poetry nights to bashment dances whatever you like it just depends on what day of the week it comes so yeah mm-hmm. so that's been it's been it's been it's been interesting Would you that was, is that what you've been doing yeah, that's as been, of late yeah that's I've been doing that since 2021 so we opened that in 2021 just after coronavirus and everything opened okay. so, so that's and, yeah that's another we we're maintaining everything we're just maintaining yeah, okay, can't yeah compl- they can't complain yeah. and yeah so those are the main hustles at the moment but like I said we had the uh, mentoring business as well working with the kids and all that kind of stuff as well so is that charity based yeah so we funded by different people and philanthropists and whatnot but we've kind of broken that down now and Zimbo's doing what he's doing. I think it's called Mind's Eye or something like that. So go and check it out. Um, Zimbo's, he's working, doing a whole lot. He's doing mad stuff in the community, doing great stuff. Like I said, you get me, he's become a pillar of the community right now. Mm-hmm. From gangbanging to, you get me, that guy. I think it's so important that we celebrate those people. Of course. Because it yeah. takes a lot. It's so easy yeah. to come off the road and just hide behind oh, doors, you know, to yeah. actually promote the thing, yeah. like, push it and yeah. to go deal with everybody because like I said you're going against all the beliefs that you've been even though it's bullshit well that's what you've been taught to believe that this is the thing mm-hmm. so you have to reprogram yourself and change your own mindset and, mm-hmm. and it's a lot but I'm not there yet like I said I can, we're nearly there yeah we're nearly there yeah, yeah but I'm saying like we've come a long way anyway so let's not even yeah. definitely come a long way yeah. Yeah, but we can definitely do better than that. and I feel like that's important as long as you know you're aware that you're and you're trying to do better mm-hmm. like that's the best you can do is know and be aware that you're you're, you're climbing. No one ain't sitting. Yeah, like I said, you can't be celebrate yourself. Mm. Wake up in the morning, you're feeling good, you're doing something, you did something, even if it just took a little step, a little step is better than no step. Or taking a big step that's difficult to take and that and it's going to take ages to get up. It's better you take loads of little steps and get to where you need to get to. Mm. So every day you get me, give yourself some goals and make sure you tick that off. And that's mm. it. Could be just exercising, could be just be something, just, you get me, just always celebrate yourself. Mm. Definitely. Because life, like, uh, we, it, we, what's going on in society right now, I feel like we've been trained to be depressed, you know, like that. It's always, oh, worrying about this and worrying about that. But we, we live in England. They give us a lot. And yet, mm-hmm. we, there's people getting bombed and blown up right now. And they, you understand, mm-hmm. they haven't got nothing. Like, you get free healthcare, free this, free that, you know, free solicitors. Mm-hmm. Like, like you just, they give us a lot, so we're not really in a bad Do you think that's place. the reason why a lot of British people suffer from depression? Because... They're not appreciative of what they have. Not, not, not that it's too easy, but that not whole, easy, you, but that whole everything's free kind of mentality. It's like when you look on it, is it worth it? I think it is a lot to do with just wanting more materialism. See yeah. what's going on. Like I said, right now, I've had few people for me saying, oh, bro, my head's not in a good place and this, that, and fair, but it's because you're trying to keep up with the Joneses and everything, what everybody else is. The mm. fake, the, yeah, people only posting their wins. They ain't posting their everyday shit, you know, like that. People only posting my their sister said, out. She said, Sash, you know what? You know you're not real unless you're fake. That's the problem. You have to be fake to be real nowadays. The new real is fake. And it's like, you know, there's only a few real ones left mm-hmm. from our generation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's only a few. Mm-hmm. So it's like to see what's happening yeah. with our people is sad. sad. It's very, very it's sad. sad. I feel sorry for these kids. Imagine how they're going for that. They have, but it might change because they might just be so raw with it. You get me? Because they're going to have to. There's only so much time people can fake. You can't fake forever. So it's gonna, that's why a lot of people are cracking. They're keeping up this facade and putting themselves in so much pressure and life and this, mm. that, and the third. And we're in the country where they'll and give the you, comparison. they'll give you this and give you that. By the end of the month, I want this and I want that and I want yeah. this on top of what I just gave you. Like it's gangster yeah. shit. What's going on, really? 
I'm gonna give you Eddie Can I have it, bro? Just make sure you can pay my money, dog. Do you want my Skrilla? It's it's Skrilla. Skrilla. You know, like that end of the month, forget me, run my money. You know, like, run my pee, dog. You understand it? That's how the government's got us. And they'll give you anything that you want. And just make sure you got my pee. And then at the end of the month, you see them last few days of the month, and everybody's under mad stress, pressure. Yo, this is going out. Yo, I need to do this. I need to do that. And you get me? The next thing you know, people get and paid. You can feel it in the energy. You can feel that, it. that hunger. I hate it, man. Yo, it's just the pressure. It's scary. Like I said, it's all of the stunting. Everybody just live within their means and just chill out. Yeah, I think that's what it is. You know, I think we're living in a materialistic yes. world, mm-hmm. and it's getting peak. It's peak. It's peak, peak, peak. And this, all of these images that people have fed, like if you're not doing this, you're not living. It's yeah, not, like, if you're not if you're like, wearing, you're yeah, not. You're not, and it's bullshit. It's a bag just to, to let everybody know. Just a bag of bullshit. Like it's just stuff. Yeah. It's just for like connections with people and being in places where you're happy and just being out to the zone. Yeah. Like, we didn't choose our lives to be in nature and wake up. You, you, you're a traveler, so you know it. And I see yeah, them just... sunsets and I see the things you take pictures outside. No, you get me. I see it. I'm about that life, yo. As just... soon as it, I, I start getting itchy. Yeah. I'm not gonna. I get the itchy feet. I yeah. gotta go. Gotta go. I'll be looking on Come the map, on, yeah. sky scanner. Yeah, yeah. I'm Something looking. Like, get me just to get out of this place, but it has to be that like nature and just being around that vibe. You know, like just being able to pick things off the tree, like. We're living on a rock and paying for it. I seen that the other day, you understand? And paying to live on this rock. Yeah. And being charged to live on this rock is mad. And like, everything we need, yeah. Mm. Just, obviously in England, we can't grow fruits and whatever not, but this ain't really our place. We can grow fruits, but we can't grow tropical fruits. fruits yeah. Them right. the ones that I like. Yeah. Do you understand? That's grown from the sun, that normal. We get the artificial lighting and all that kind of the things. Yeah. But, yeah. So yeah. it's all about traveling. I think. Experience things. In yeah. Life. If you can get away from this place, that's what it is. But there's a trap in it because it's. I feel like cause if get any small it. neighborhood, any small city, you got to get out of it. Like anyone needs to get out of their city. It, you got you come back definitely, mm-hmm. but get out of it. The world's a big place. Make the world your home in it. That's what I need to do. Travel more and just yeah. get out and just be out there. Do so you like traveling? Yeah. So either way, I feel like. Your career, to me, is beautiful. I know there's more to come. Mm-hmm. I know that you're going to show us more. This is just the start, man. This is just the start. Do you ever say to yourself, fuck this, I'm over with it, I'm done? I'm kind of, if I start something, I can finish it. I got a ton of yeah. So even when everything, everybody else is like, bruv, get off, man. Everybody else is telling me to fuck it off. Like, Hanging on. Bro, I like that. I said, the vision, man, if you can't see, I know it's going to pop off. I know yeah. I just got to be consistent. Like, even what I just was saying to you, they might take this amount of time, when he calls, it goes. You might fail 99 times, but they say that 100th time. Yeah. I'm good forever. That's be. what I feel like everyone needs to hear. I'm good Just forever, be. Pushing. You know, like that. Keep yeah. pushing, man. And check. You see what it is with this thing called life? Find something you enjoy doing and just do that. Yeah. Like I said, I got an alcohol business, I can go to the club, I can do like my, you yeah. me at these things I enjoy too. Even like, if I, I can just go and be just, in my space yeah. and, and make, you know, like that and be, and yeah. wake up in the morning and get through my day doing something that I enjoy doing. Yeah. I and find that that's important. Doing what, even if you've got to do your work to make money that you might not really like. Mm-hmm. See in your spare time, mm-hmm. just do what you like. You get yeah, enough of spare time. You get me? That's what it is. Yeah. Chase your dream. I'm saying focus on it. Believe in it. Make you believe in God. You know, like, you hear me? What happened? You hear me? That's what I believe. Are you religious? I believe in the higher entity. I don't believe in religion. I think that's a big divide. I think if we all, I, I, like, I, like, I like the teachings of Islam because, like I said, it's kind of, that out of all of them, that kind of makes sense, even with the fasting, even with relationships, even with the, just certain little things that you get me out It's beautiful. That, yeah, that's why it's more standing. Like I said, Christianity, and I grew up in it, but a lot of it's storytelling. And when, when I'm watching the preacher, because to read something, everybody interprets it their own way. So every weekend, this pastor, and they go to another church, this pastor's got something to say the same scripture, so that means mm. everybody's just making it whatever they feel like they wanted to feel like. I feel that was quite condescending. Yeah, exactly that. Understand every week somebody's just making up whatever they want, just whatever fits them for that moment, you know, and mm. that day. You understand it? What this is going on? So, this in life, and then the next week, it's going to talk about the same thing. What this past, this speech is going to have something, it's too much twisting it up. Like I said, well, I'm going to realize with the Quran and that, and it's just it is what it is. There's no, this is what it is, and taking mm. like this. But at the same time, religion mm. d- divides people. Do you feel division is important? I think division is what's breaking us down. Mm-hmm. Division is what's not making. Everybody wants to be divided. Everybody wants to be on their own separate thing. And mm-hmm. everybody wants to feel better than the next person or they know better than this person and that. Mm-hmm. Collectively, we're meant to move as one. And that's where the power comes. Human beings are human beings though, so it's... We're herd animals. 
I was reading something the other day and it was like, humans are herd animals. Mm -hmm. I think it was something apprentice, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. But either way, it was like, yeah, like we follow each other. And I started thinking like, I know I've always been a little different, but we be following each other. Mm -hmm. You can see it's the herd mentality, whatever's cool, like I said, we set trends, whatever's cool and it yeah. comes and it's a ripple effect. Or oh, they think it's cool, but it's the respect. So you have to understand what people mm. are respecting because when they respect it, they think, oh, I want to be like that person. This and that's like, how it is. Like, yeah. And that's how propaganda in the media controls minds. Yeah. And that's why the music and all these things are so dangerous because these people that have been brought out to be the cool people. The music is dangerous. It's actually just the same people. We set trends, so when that cool person yeah. sets that trend and starts talking that fuckery, the kids take it all in and yeah. want to be like them. They all, they all look the same. Even me, certain times you'd be singing the lyrics and I'd be like, what? I didn't get into it. And I'd be like, you know what? Yo, I can't be saying this. Yeah, it's wild. It's <laughs> very, very dark. I, like I said, I love hip hop. That's the fuck talking about it. But I love all the media stuff poisoned me, even like men watching Minister Society back in the day, thinking, all right, you know. You don't really fit in in society thinking, oh shit, this, yeah. this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Yeah, I know what you mean. Like, say off and that, like, what? Yeah. Hey, I'm different. <laughs> I'm so completely different. <laughs> All right, cool. You get me, don't fit into this. You get me with us out. You get me, I'm an outlaw. Yeah. Basically, no, that's what it is. Me. And that's what it is. That's what these kids think they are. Yeah. Yeah, media dangerous. But we are herd animals. Yeah. Come back for a part two. We did, yeah. we did it again. This is the warm up. Yeah, we'll come back for a part two. I might as well talk about my business as well. So make sure you get yourself some camo vodka. You can get it online if you like. Oh, I'm localized in Gali. Ask them why not. You get me. So tell them to tap into their um, wholesale camo vodka. Yeah, where do yeah, you, you get it? You can get it online, but if you're localized in Gali, tell your local to tap in and they can, should be able to get it from a wholesaler somewhere okay, in the cool. UK. All right. So yeah, camo vodka. K O M. K A M. K A M. No, we're leaving that. No, we're leaving that. K A M. Oh, sorry. That's what left. Hey, hey, everyone, go get it.